Welcome back, Situate students and faculty. We are returning with yet another Situate alumni interview, and today we are joined with... Uh, Caitlin Costello. <laughs> and then I'm also joined here with... Uh, Hope Clemens. And then we have Dominic Cray over on Tech. Say hello. Hello. And uh, I'm sure you can see, a bit festive this year, going into Christmas time. I had to bring Santa on to the interview. But uh, before we go any further, we're just going to go straight into the interview questions. Mm -hmm. I'll go first. Uh, what was the most important or your favorite classes you took here at Stuart High School? Um, it blurs together a lot. <laughs> but I definitely um, obviously loved art class with Mrs. Feldman. She was awesome. Um, especially her portfolio class. Mm -hmm. That was so helpful um, for me going into art school. And I feel like I can't be thankful enough for um, specifically Mrs. Feldman to you um, mm -hmm. staying with me after school to help make my portfolio to actually get into art school because um, she was a huge help with all of that. Um, but I also really enjoyed AP English with um, Mr. Haney taught it at the time. Mm -hmm. Not here anymore. Not yeah. here anymore. Mm -hmm. Sad. He was super awesome. And um, at the time, I felt like that class was way too hard. Um, <laughs> and he was like uh, asking too much of us. And his, you know, like we had to rewrite a certain essay. I, it was like, it became a meme basically, right. rewriting this one essay like six or seven times. But um, I think it really, looking back on it, it really helped kind of like force myself into thinking um, in a way that I would use a lot in college of just, you know, thinking. Outside the box sounds cliche, um, but I guess thinking more conceptually, um, right, right. thinking critically about things, um, and kind of questioning everything that you're looking at. I know, that's awesome, because there is a great art department here, and there's a lot yes. of students interested in art, so there's oh, going to be a lot of students interested in this as well. That's and great. I definitely feel that. I put a lot of pressure on myself with the AP classes, and I really try to get that point across to learn these skills and actually <laughs> learn how to deal with whether it's rewriting a thing over and over again or just learning to adapt, basically. That's the reason why I took those classes. Totally. And also, uh, when you were in high school, did you know where you wanted to go to college and, more importantly, leaving the state? Yeah, so um, ever since I was a kid, my parents had kind of, like, put RISD into my brain. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> They're like, Makes go sense. to RISD, go to RISD, go to RISD. Um, and I did apply to RISD. I got waitlisted. Yeah. Um, and come to find out if I had if I had um, sort of reached out to the school and claimed my spot on the wait list, I had a good chance of getting into the school. Um, but MassArt and Northeastern were two colleges in Boston that I really liked. Yeah. And um, I toured MassArt. And it, on paper, I was like, ah, it's, <laughs> this doesn't look as impressive as RISD. I mean, yeah. it's in Boston, which is cool. I love Boston. And I really liked the idea of living in, a, in like a city that was bigger than Providence, um, but was still close to home. It's like an hour and a half on the train. So I, I toured Mass Art and that changed my mind. I, I fell in love with um, the school and it was really cool. That's so awesome. yeah, Amazing. yeah, and a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> it's always important. Yeah. You said you liked art and you thought about RISD from a young age, but how young did you know that you wanted to be an artist? That's a good question. I feel like it wasn't until high school really that I started to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And even then I was really nervous. Um, I, I had like a lot of relatives tell me like, what's your backup, are you gonna? Um, you know, find a, like a minor in business or something. Um, but I just kind of like, I was like, it's all in or nothing, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I originally was thinking illustration. Um, and then in high school, there was a summer RISD class um, for animation that I took. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. That's your introduction. Almost. Yeah, that was my introduction, and um, I had a lot of fun, and the teacher said that I had a good eye for motion. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay. Literally, mm -hmm. like, this one sentence from this one random person, it was enough to, like, set me on a trajectory to um, become an animator. So. Yeah, no, definitely, especially when you get information and you get motivation sometimes for the person that says it, it doesn't really mean much to them, but that can stay with you for life. Yeah. I have instances where that stuck with me for life, too. Totally. Completely relate to that. Mm -hmm. And you kind of started talking about um, your career. You started as a film archivist, and then you moved into a freelance uh, animator, which you are today. Can you talk a little bit about those positions and uh, what it was like going through those positions? Totally. Um, so my BFA from MassArt was animation. Um, I graduated in 2020, so it was kind of a yeah. dumpster fire of 
what am I going to do? How am I going to get a job right. now? Everything has completely changed. Um, so I was doing some freelance animation, but it wasn't enough to really like pay the bills. I was living in Boston at the time and was, yes, <laughs> it is expensive. <laughs> and I was looking to move to New York, which is also Even expensive. expensive. <laughs> yes. Um, so I needed some like supplementary income. And uh, a couple friends of mine were working at this place in Boston that digitized old VHS tapes. Um, oh. Yeah, and then they also had like a film section too. So they would they would scan photographs, but also film reels. So, yeah, I was I was trained in that, and it was kind of an adjacent like, oh, I'm interested in like time based media and um, analog formats of video and recording things. So, did that, and then when I moved to New York, um, again, it was very hard to get a job. So luckily, there was a place that also specialized in digitizing things. Um, so I started out in their photo department and then um, the film, the person who was running the film um, sort of transferring, he gave his two weeks very suddenly and the, the manager was kind of scrambling to find someone because the software is so niche and weird and like the person who builds the machines to scan the film, it's just one guy and he lives in Texas and he, <laughs> Roger, <laughs> he's super, he's a character. Um, but uh, I mean, aside, those are the affordable machines. The other ones are in Hollywood and they're like thousands, hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars. Yeah, lasers, scanning, it's crazy. But um, he, he saw on my resume, he remembered that I had, you know, the um, experience with RetroScan right. in Boston. Right. So. Um, I, in the span of like a week, became the manager of the <laughs> film department. <laughs> That's amazing though. Just getting yeah. Close to you. Yeah, it was super cool. And um, really, I mean, besides it just being interesting to work with film, like um, touching it with your hands and repairing it, um, cleaning it, part of the scanning process is watching it mm -hmm. go through the projector and making sure that it's not moving too much or that the image is in focus. Um, so it was also like kind of inspirational to see all of these like birthday parties from the 50s yeah. <laughs> and like um, traveling around the world, like Paris in the 60s. It was, it was very, very cool. That ranged from like the 20s really to the cool. 80s, if I'm yes, correctly. Yes, right? That's awesome. The oldest film we had, it was a 16 millimeter black and white film um, from a woman's college from 1918. Oh. Uh, yeah, and it was like a promotional film. So it had them, it was like the Women's Olympic Games and it's them in like <laughs> togas, like. Like they had little chariots um, that they were pulling, and then like two other women sitting in the back going around a gymnasium. It was awesome. it was very cool. Seeing the yeah. evolution of film, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyways, sorry to end, to finish the oh, question because I rambled a lot about that. Um, I ended up um, getting a job at BuzzFeed right. um, through a friend that I met at a film festival. It was like very complicated, but that's <laughs> on networking, I guess. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> yeah, and a position opened up, so um, I hopped to that full time and I've been working there for about a year. That's awesome. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, back to the topic of your art and your videos. Uh, where do you get your inspiration for those? Oh, that's a good question. Um, um, <laughs> a lot of it is from my friends. Um, I, I through the course of going to a lot of film festivals, have met some incredible animators and illustrators and artists, um, and I keep track with them on Instagram. Um, so I just, you know, see whatever they're up to and posting new. And they do a really good job of sharing other work that they find interesting. Um, so I think those are my biggest inspirations. It sounds pretty insular, but <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, I was watching your YouTube videos the other day, and I saw uh, it was quite an evolution. I saw you posted three videos in the same day, which, first of all, <laughs> I'm sure it's like a long time to make those projects. Yes, yes. But they range from almost like black and white drawings to adding color, and you even did a stop motion, if I was thinking correctly. I don't yeah. know if I'm too well. Um, basically, the main question is like, what is your goal with your pieces and what is like your favorite I almost got a sense of like dream core from it what is like mm. your goal and what is like your favorite outcome for these pieces yeah good question um so it's funny because my YouTube and the reason why there are like three posts in one day yeah. um or part of the reason is because when I was in school Vimeo was the major platform to sort of post everything on it's kind of died now and a lot of problems <laughs> with it um but on that kind of like streaming uh, platform or video platform, you could find like a lot of my student work because um, we were encouraged to post, which is why um, if you were to look that up, you'd see more experimental stuff, yeah. you'd see some stop motion, um, some black and white stuff, just because mm -hmm. I, was, I was posting things as I made them. 
Um, and then I graduated and sort of came, became uh, more focused on honing a voice or, or um, a tone, I guess, to my work. So when I made my YouTube, I was like, okay, what should I cherry pick to sort of, um, you know, put out there instead of just showing all of my work in a <laughs> random like sand animation or like cut paper under the camera animation. So um, yeah, I feel like my work now, it's definitely veering towards like Adult Swim yeah. type. Yeah, um, there's a, an Instagram account called A Studio Digital okay. that posts a lot of like short form content that's independently created by animators. Um, so I'm kind of going down that route of um, comedy, narrative, um, stuff that's hand drawn 2D. Yeah. That's that's what I kind of specialize in, um, and I'm really interested in like writing, directing, and producing all of those things. And I just kind of wanted to piggyback off that question really quick, and I noticed there was a, kind of almost like a shift in theme from mm. the two years ago to the, one of the more recent videos. Uh, it was why am I scared to quit my evil job? <laughs> I found that it was almost more realistic in an everyday like situation, like someone runs into that every day compared to a film like House Cat, where it was kind of just like a topic, it was just kind of there, not really realistic, but it's still really cool. House Cat was personally my favorite. Oh, thanks. <laughs> what made you have like the certain shift into almost like the meaning behind it? Um, I think it's a few things. The first is my, my job, I think my day job is definitely rubbing off on me yeah. because um, at BuzzFeed I work for The Land of Bogs, um, which is an online show, and we basically try to make um, viral content, so anything that people can relate to. Uh, a lot of our brainstorm sessions are just us bringing stories about our friends or our family, like things that they did, and then kind of riffing from there. Um, so I think I got kind of used to looking at um, what's going on around me, what's happening to me. That jobs or that film specifically was about the film job <laughs> um, because I did enjoy it a lot, but yeah. the manager was um, a little crazy. Yeah, no, that could definitely shift <laughs> yeah, your yeah. It job. was it was like a, a, a bit of a stressful kind of like managerial situation, but. Um, the, yeah, so that was the inspiration for, for creating that film. Um, and then I also have a lot of friends in like the Brooklyn com com comedy scene um, who kind of also influence um, that writing a bit just because I'm watching them do their thing and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. They're making jokes about things that are happening to them or things that are happening to their friends and everyone finds it really relatable. And um, a funny story about that quitting video yeah. is it premiered at this um, show called Club Video Show. I was gonna bring that up. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> um, and I did, those happen I think like four times a year. Yeah. And the whole premise is that they put out a call for artists and um, you have one month to make a completely new, never seen before short. It's usually comedy and a lot of it is live action, like comedians doing skit mm -hmm. videos. Um, but there are a handful of animators in there as well. And I made the quitting job one and then a couple months later I made another one and I went to that screening and somebody recognized me and was like, oh my God, you're the person that made the quitting film. Oh, that's awesome. Wow, I quit my job after <laughs> watching that. That's amazing. And oh I was like, goodness. wait, are you serious? <laughs> I was like, are you okay? Was, was it good? <laughs> like, are you all right? He was like, yeah, no, no, it was fine. It just, he was like, I was unhappy there for a while. I just wow. needed a push. All you need is that push. And just think about all the people you've touched. Just that one person. I know. That that's incredible. I know. <laughs> I got so flustered. <laughs> say is your favorite and your least favorite part of working as an animator? Mm. So my favorite part um, is animating. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds stupid, but um, in, within like the process it takes to make an animation, there's so much. There's storyboarding, there's writing, there's the post-production, and then like the actual animating, the in-betweening, drawing like frame by frame. I really enjoy that part. Um, it's just is fun and really slow. <laughs> it takes a lot of patience, but it's also like weirdly meditative, and yeah. it's cool to see like uh, you know emotions start to come into form. Um, my least favorite part is the very end of like animation production, where um, the animation is done, it's colored, the sound design is nearly there, but I'm like, oh my god, I forgot to do like titles and credits. Now I have to make <laughs> this look nice, and I thought I was done. I'm so close. That's my least favorite. <laughs> and uh, the next thing I wanted to touch on is 
some of your projects have been screened before, and that must be an amazing feeling to see. And what was it like seeing your screenings for the first time? Like there was House Cat at Pictoplasma, and that was mm-hmm. in Berlin. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> and then you had also Why Am I Scared to Quit My Job? That was at Malt Adult, multiple places, New York City uh, broadcast video show, or club video show, sorry, mm-hmm. and uh, Hellavision's uh, Earth Show episode. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk a little bit about what it was like seeing those for the first time screened? Totally, yeah. So um, House Cat was a weird one because that was the one that, was in Berlin at right. Pictoplasma. Um, that was my graduating thesis film from MassArt, and typically um, the seniors have a big screening at the end of the year to celebrate finishing a film, but yeah. also it's a huge networking opportunity. Mm-hmm. A lot of um, you know scouts from studios come, but that was canceled because <laughs> of 2020. Of um, so that I finished, I, I was supposed to finish it by the time I graduated, but it actually took me another like year and a half to finish it. Um, and then, I submitted it to a bunch of festivals, got rejected from a lot, (laughs) got accepted into a couple, and one of them was Pictoplasma in Berlin, which was crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, so I flew out to Berlin. Um, That's incredible. (laughs) Yeah, it was really, really cool. I met a bunch of filmmakers. Um, You know, there were a lot of really amazing artist talks and competition screenings. So um, seeing my short screened there was surreal. It was like a crowd of other people whose work I studied in college. Um, yeah, yeah, that's odd. <laughs> but I'm like, wow, okay. And people, you know, complimenting me afterwards and saying that they really liked it. It was super awesome. nice. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, but then the other ones, like the New York ones, are a lot more casual. They sound cool because it's like New York City. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> the the um, club video show ones are super DIY. It's like, it's the that's the one I mentioned where you have a month to make something and then the screening is in this like random warehouse in Bushwick and there's <laughs> free beer and everyone is just it's a really lively crowd. Everyone's yeah. like hooting and hollering and like cheering. Like the quitting one, everyone was chanting like quit <laughs> along with the film. That's so amazing. yeah, not a serious viewing environment, but definitely a very fun one. Regardless, you're introduced to the scene. You yeah. meet a lot of people that way. That's awesome. Good Absolutely. Thanks. And uh you kind of touched on it earlier. How difficult was it for you to find your spot within this field? And how did you know you actually secured a spot in this field? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it was tough because I feel like this industry in particular is very uh, connection-based. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's – um, and it's also tricky because a lot of studios, you might not get um, hired for a job, and it's not because your work isn't good. Um, or you don't have enough experience. It's just that sometimes they're looking for a particular look that you don't have. You're not the right, right fit. So that can get a little, um, it's hard to, to keep your head up and remind yourself, okay, um, I, I do belong here. Like I am successful in, in this career. It's just maybe this, this show that I applied to wasn't looking for right. 2D you know, hand-drawn stuff or right. um, specifically that style. So um, I guess the, the way that <laughs> um, I know that I belong here is the su- kind of support system I mentioned earlier of all those other mm-hmm. filmmakers and animators um, that I met at, like through various film festivals and stay in touch with online. Um, everyone else is in the same boat. Mm-hmm. I feel like when I was a student looking from the outside in, I was like, oh my God, everyone totally has all of their stuff together. Um, they you know, are, know exactly what they're doing and jobs come so easily to them. It's just like one after the other, but after meeting them and talking to them, it's like, oh, okay, no, everyone's in the same boat. Right. Everyone is just kind of like getting some jobs, not getting others. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, I was going to talk about what artists and creators inspire you. Yeah, so there's a couple. Um, Hayao Miyazaki is definitely a huge inspiration. Mm-hmm. Just came out with that new movie, The Boy and the Heron, I think. Yeah, Boy and the Heron. Oh. Yeah, he's okay. the one that um, does Studio Ghibli movies. He's the director behind oh. those. Yeah, he's very, very awesome. He's just like this crazy old Japanese man who <laughs> can't be restrained from making <laughs> more films. Um, but the narratives are really beautiful, and the animation is just so technically amazing. It's, it's really great. Um, I also really like, there's this um, animator who's popular, on YouTube and Instagram, Victoria Vincent, who also goes by Vune, um, and she makes a lot of very like edgy <laughs> work about like girlhood, yeah. and um, all of her work, the color design is incredible, and yeah. the line work is, is very nice. Um, and then lastly, I guess there are a lot of live action directors I also like as well. Um, Yorgos Lanthimos is one, 
he just came out with poor things. All of my favorite directors came out with movies this <laughs> year, specifically in like the last couple of months, um, which is awesome. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I really like looking at live action directors as well for inspiration. Yeah. I had a question to, ca- to uh, kind of add to that. When making your animations, is there a time that like you'll try and emulate those other animators or is there like you'll switch between videos, maybe one video you'll try and emulate this animator or you know vice versa switch between animators totally totally yeah i mean i definitely <laughs> i definitely like to um borrow influences from um other artists i think i'm a strong believer that nothing can be created in a vacuum um <laughs> so definitely it's okay to borrow it's not okay to like steal and plagiarize right. but it is okay to borrow um i have a friend who as an illustrator, and he would work with, um, you know, middle school students trying to prepare, or high school and middle school students trying in like an after school program to help buff up their art skills. And something he always told them is, um, looking at artists' work is like going to a buffet, um, and there's, you know, there's like a plate of cookies and like a whole cake and um, all these other things. That those are like one artist's work. He's like, it's okay to take like a cookie and like a <laughs> slice of cake and like this other thing to make your own plate or like your own piece of work, but don't take the whole plate of cookies yeah. <laughs> and call it your own. Um, so I think that that kind of relates. And yeah, they're definitely, um, I mean, after watching Boy and the Heron by Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli, that definitely, now I'm thinking less about, oh, how do I write something funny and like the part of my brain is itching again of like, how do I animate something that looks really pretty? (laughs) How do I make this motion look as like most extravagant and like beautiful thing as possible and like flex those technical skills? All right, so we're gonna go into the kind of wrap up questions here. I'm gonna lead it with, if you had any advice to give to any high schoolers in general, uh, what would the advice be? Yeah, um, don't be afraid to try new things. I think that's a really good piece of advice I could have used. and be nice. <laughs> be nice. Be nice to people. Yeah, um, that's always. I mean, that was going to be part of my. If you asked about like professional question. Yeah. Um, and operating in the field, being nice is also a really big one. But specifically for college, um, yeah, trying new things, being open-minded. I feel like these are pretty standard like yeah. answers, stuff that you probably they're hear before. They're Th- but they're true. If yeah, they're, they're not nice and you're not open-minded. You're not going to go anywhere. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's, it's all part true. of the process. It's true, and like trying new things, you know. Because, hey, if you try something and you didn't like it, then you don't have to do it again. Exactly. It's that easy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, similarly, what advice would you give to students who specifically want careers in art? Yeah, so again, be nice. That's such mm-hmm. a big one. Um, a lot of the connections I've made are like personal connections and following people on Instagram and supporting their work, sharing their work. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, being nice, being able to like uh, hang out with people and have a conversation that's like maybe not related to art at all. It's just like for fun. That's that's really important. Right. Um, working hard is huge. Um, I feel like a lot of the times, especially in animation, I hear the phrase "work harder, not smarter." Mm-hmm. But um, <laughs> I like work harder and smarter. <laughs> Fair. Um, because, or no, sorry, work smarter, not harder. Oh my God. <laughs> you, knew, you knew what I meant. Work smarter, not harder. Work smarter and harder. That's, <laughs> that's what it is. Um, because I feel like in college, I was really guilty of like working harder and not smarter. I would yeah. take the longest possible route to do something and that burnt me out. It made me really tired. And um, I mean, I did learn shortcuts through doing that, right. <laughs> through taking the long way. Um, but yeah, I think working hard and working smart. So like knowing when to take the shortcuts, knowing when to put in a little effort, little extra effort into something to make it look really polished and nice. Um, I think that's that's really important. Awesome. I think that wraps it up for yeah. today. Thank you so cool. much to Kate yeah. for coming out today. It was an incredible Thank opportunity. You guys. I know a lot of students out there are gonna truly appreciate this interview. Oh. And uh, any closing remarks? Uh, happy holidays. <laughs> happy holidays, thank you so much. Thank you, Santa. Yeah. <laughs>